place named UCC, University College of the Caribbean, they are offering six one. I know they are offering six one. Appreciate that. Just stand at the podium for me one second. This I'm just checking to see where we are. Yes, man, looking good. Look. Yes, man, thank you so much. Trusting in his grace, his 
or are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Or are you washed in the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Father, I pray for those who are at home tonight, 
were not able to join us live in your house. But God, they have joined us on Facebook. They have joined us on YouTube. We pray tonight, God, that your divine hand may rest upon them. You may deliver them and you may set them free. Oh God, let your word inspire them. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon them. And oh God, you may give them the strength at this time. Remember those who are sick in body, those who are about to do surgeries. Father, we pray tonight uh, that you may lay your hand upon them. Uh, and oh God, you may comfort them. Uh, and you may let them know that you are the great physician. Uh, and by your stripes they are healed. Uh, God, remember those who are at home who have lost the loved ones. Uh, those that are grieving, Father. But from this house we pray tonight uh, that, oh God, you may comfort them, uh, you may strengthen them, uh, you may bear them up in your hand uh, as they go through this time, Father. Oh God, we pray that you, the great comforter, may be with them in this time. Uh, Father, as we go into your word this evening, that you, God, may bless us, uh, that you, God, may strengthen us, uh, that you, God, may let your power and your glory rest upon us in a mighty way tonight. Give us wisdom, give us knowledge, give us understanding from your word tonight and let your glory fill this house. Let your presence overshadow us and let your blessing be upon us, your people. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. Have your way now and bless us with your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name, somebody say, Amen. 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 You have your Bibles with you. Those who are joining us live on Facebook, if you have your devices with you, you could please turn with me to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8. As I say, welcome tonight to teaching service, normally teaching and testimony service, because we were under the, the curfew, we are at teaching, but we are getting there. We're getting there in the house of the Lord. So just want to say welcome each and every one tonight. Thank you for making it the Old Harbor Evangelistic Center Church where God is our source and he is our help. Romans chapter 8 and we're going to read from verse 1 to verses 13 tonight. From verse 1 to verses 13. Let's read together after two, one, two. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subjected to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, now, if any man have the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, he are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if he live after the flesh, he shall die. But if he live through the spirit to mortify the deeds of the body, he shall live. Glory be to God. 
Father, his word by saying, Glory be to the Father, Son of Blessed Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, no one ever shall be. Word will end. Amen. Rich the bless you, you may be seated. I want to say thank you for being in the house of the Lord tonight. By way of announcement, I just like to remind everyone tonight, those who are joining us live on Facebook, that we are in our season of sowing. We are preparing our hearts and our minds, your prayer requests, and the envelopes are ready for your first fruit offering. I'm imploring everyone who is joining us, who is listening us, who is hearing us from this house, please come over, joining us here at Kolaba Evangelistic Center Church, collect your first fruit offering envelopes. They are ready and we are asking you to send your prayer request with your first fruit offering. Take it in on the first Sunday in January 2021 if the Lord tarries. You can also send your first fruit offering to the Old Arbor Evangelistic Center Church account. You can also send it to our PayPal account. Just indicate in a message to us to say that you have lodged your first fruit offering and send your prayer request and we will put it with those that are delivered here. So I'm imploring each and every one who is under the hearing of my voice who is joining us live on Facebook and YouTube. Please remember, this is a season in preparation for the breaking of a new year as we give of our first fruit offering unto the Lord. Please joining us live this Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We'll be right here at the Old Harbor Evangelistic Center Church worshiping the Lord with you live on Facebook and those that are on YouTube. Please come on out, sow your seed, bring your prayer requests and believe God that 2020 the Lord will work an exceptional work. What the Lord is doing in 2020 is the Lord's doing and I know that after a battle after a great fight there will come a time of rejoicing and I am not doubting I am anticipating I am not fearing I am believing that God is going to give us a time of rejoicing in the near future so let's believe the Lord let's continue to worship and to glorify him and to give him thanks for his blessing so Please remember joining us on Facebook and YouTube right here at the Old Harbor Evangelistic Center Church. As we get into our teaching tonight, you know we always do a quick revision of the services tonight. so much. Thank you so much. I was just informed of the questions that are coming on the Facebook page. So we will see how best we can identify those. I just went to take a look at the device to ensure that there were any messages at this time. We have received your information and therefore we will use it to enhance our teaching each evening here at the Old Ark Evangelistic Center Church. So looking forward, please remember Christmas morning service is at 6 a.m. right here at the Old Arbor Evangelistic Center Church. 6 a.m. on December the 25th. Joining us live if you can't join us here in the house of the Lord. Christmas Sunday, December the 27th, right here at the Old Arbor Evangelistic Center Church will be coming out. And watch night service the 31st of December 2020. We want to bring in the new year in the house of the Lord, starting at 7 p.m. right here, live on Facebook and YouTube. Please join us. Please join us. Come on out. Let's let us have a wonderful time rejoicing in the Lord. The Lord has been good. And I can say that tonight because you are alive. That's why you are watching us live. You are alive. That's why you are sitting in the house of the Lord. I'm alive. And therefore, that gives us enough reason to give God glory. So let's get back to our teaching, picking up from last week. 
we have been doing walking in the spirit and the heading is that's a major topic that we're doing and since last week we have been doing the what we have been doing since last week the spirit of God dwelling in us and therefore if you look in Romans chapter 8 the, 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 the explanation and the introduction of those words keep coming as you quickly glance through the word of God in Romans chapter 8 Paul keep repeating the word over and over and keep putting it in the mind of the people that if the spirit of God dwells in you Romans chapter 9 it says that if he be that the spirit of God dwell in you Romans chapter 8 verse 11 it says and if the spirit of God dwell in you shall quicken your mortal body and as you go down it keeps repeating the context and the, the, the strength that Paul is saying to the church is that the spirit of God must dwell inside of us any other key point came out last week that we documented about the Spirit of God dwelling in us? That we must prepare our body daily to accommodate the Spirit of God. We must prepare our bodies daily. It is a daily, and I would break it down to say it is a minutely, hourly preparation. We must always keep our mind and our thoughts in that place where the Spirit of God can dwell inside of us. Any other key points that we documented last week? I must live a life. I must live a life. So there were, was it four or three things you gave? Three. Three. Three things we must do to ensure that we prepare our bodies to inhabit and to accommodate the Spirit of God. Number one, we must live a life of repentance. Our life must be a life of turning from sin unto righteousness. Number two, live according to the word of God. Live according to the word of God. B I B L E. Basic instruction before leaving earth. The word of God is available, it is accessible to everybody. If you are blind, there is a word for you, you can hear it. If you are deaf, you can hear it. You can see it. If you, there is nobody. The, the word of God is in every language. It is spoken in every tongue. The word of God is available to us. And number three. Daily communicating with God. Daily communicating with God. And remember we said communication is two way. Communication is explained as a message. It's a sender. Sender send a message. The message is received. The message is sent with a feedback. And when that feedback receives to the sender, then the message is completed. What am I saying tonight? When you communicate with God, it's not a one-way street. So I don't need one. I say, Lord, I'm asking you for this and I'm asking you for that. And then I get up and go away. You must stop. You must entertain the Spirit of God to communicate to you, to talk to you. To give you instruction, read the word of God, sing the songs of Zion, and spend the time in fellowship with God. That is uh, the process of communication. Any other key point that stood out? The Spirit of God is available and accessible to every human being. Wow, what a powerful point, Sister Lou. Say that again. The Spirit of God is available and accessible to every human being. The Spirit of God. That which was prophesied by the prophet Joel, that which Jesus says, I will go, and if I go, I will say, that which came on the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one accord in one place. That spirit that the Lord sent on that day, it is available. Oh my God, of mercy. I remember when COVID just hit, Persons were saying the country is in turmoil and there won't be enough food, there won't be enough toilet paper. No, 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 
everybody remember March, April when you go in the supermarket, there was no tiny paper on the shelf. The factory was saying we're running 24 hours trying to supply the need because persons were saying, whoa, this thing will not be available. COVID is going to lock down Jamaica and we are going to be left wanting everything. But I want to say to somebody, I hope in your grabbing, in your collecting, in your, in your storing up, that we have grabbed the Holy Ghost because it is accessible to everyone. It is available. You don't have to go searching any shop. You don't have to go searching anybody's yard. You just need to go to God with a repenting heart, a broken and a contrite spirit, and say, fill my cup, Lord, and He will fill you up. The Holy Spirit is available and it is accessible to each and every one. Remember last week we gave an assignment. You want to get to the assignment. Anybody did their homework? Pastor Mitchell did his you know, because I have some sharp, I have some sharp Bible student tonight, you know. So can you can you list? I gave you a simple assignment. Can you list the ordinances of the church? Brother Nikoi gave us three. Anybody can tell me the three Brother Nikolai gave? Mm -hmm. Baptism, Lord's Supper, Lord, Supper, Communion, and Christening of Babies, Blessing of Babies. Yes, Sister Brown, go ahead. I saw your hand. Uh, um, I am fine single. Right. Baptism, Baptism Confirmation, 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 Communion, Communion Confession, Confession, Marriage, Marriage, and anointing of the sick. Wow, wonderful. Anybody form anything else? Anybody else did the assignment? Yes, Sister Brown, you are on par with what pastors found as well. Let me tell you in my research, because I ensure that I did it. Water baptism. And I'm going to give you some scriptures to support the things that are there. Water, the ordinances. So the assignment is the ordinances of the church. So, the ordinances of the church, water baptism, number one. Acts of the Apostles 8, 36 to 39. This was the baptism of the eunuch. By who? Who, who baptized the eunuch? Philip. Philip, the deacon. Who, Acts of the Apostles 8, 36 to 39. Ordinance number one, baptism. Number two, Lord's Supper. Can anybody tell me the Lord's Supper scripture we read it regularly at this church, right? How often as you eat this bread? First Corinthians 11, 23 to 30. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, we do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. Washing of feet. If I have a sharp Bible student, where do you find the washing of feet in the Word of God? Come on, young man. Anybody remember where to find the washing of feet? Jesus rose from supper, laid aside his garment, stooped and washed his disciples' feet. Hmm? It is, in, it is in all of them. It is in all of them. What are the four first books of the New Testament called? The Gospels. The Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You find the four Gospels here, but the one we use is found in St. John chapter 13, 3 to 10. St. John chapter 13, verses 3 to 10. This is where we find the washing of the feet. Remember we are speaking? Sorry, we are speaking of the ordinances of the church. What the church should be doing and must be doing for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Anointing service and the laying on of hands. They are some persons, some of the writers list them differently. Some list them as the same thing. 
James chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. The anointing service, as Sister Brown stated, which means that it is the church's responsibility to anoint the sick with oil and pray for them. And if you are going to anoint the sick with oil, you must touch them, don't it? And therefore, it says that he laid his hand upon them and pray for them. Now you see why COVID-19 is a very disruptive and a very um, evil disease that have impacted the role and the responsibility of the church. Because the church is now told that we are not to touch people because I can't touch you six feet from me. If you are six feet from me, can I anoint you with oil? Let's have went through it on you. I can't lay my hand on you if you are six feet from me. This is what COVID is interrupting. And I'm telling the church that we must understand the prophecies and what is coming, how it will impact the church and the ministry. Listen to this. The ordinance of the church is for the assembling of ourselves together. Look what COVID did. Tell us how we must stand away are. Fifteen people to come to church. We cannot assemble together to worship the Lord. And I said, let's do it virtually. But how do you feel virtually? I, I, I'm not saying it, it, it is not informative. I'm not saying I, I, I don't participate. But it really lacks something. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 25. What am I read? I find that from it. It's the only scripture that I'm going to do on the ordinances. Because COVID has affected the church in this way. Look at the ordinances. The church is not allowed to wash feet. Is not allowed to anoint anybody. It's not allowed to lay hands. And it is preventing people from assembling together. Hebrews 10 verses 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. As the manner of some is. As the manner of some is. But exalting one another. But exalting one another. And so much the more. And so much the more. As ye see the day approach. As ye see the day approach. Oh my God. Anybody see the day approaching? Anybody see the end is coming when we understand that COVID-19 of the ordinances of the church, COVID-19 have eliminated washing of feet, anointing and laying on of hands, and assembling of ourselves together. And the one that we practice here a lot in Odaba, greeting each other, with a hug and a kiss. When last you hug somebody at church, we're not allowed to. When last you touch somebody, we're not allowed to because of COVID-19. But the Bible said, greet your brother with a holy kiss. Yes? Right? So therefore, I'm saying to us, and, and I know Deacon Earl was here tonight, Deacon Earl's favorite scripture as I am sharp than I am. Yes? So does the what? The countenance. Now, if you be in a mask, how can I see your countenance, Brother Martha? All I'm seeing is two eyes looking out at me. The countenance of your face is what encourages your brother and encourages your sister. So, this disease has impacted the ordinances of the church significantly. So, let's do them again. The ordinances of the church are one, water baptism, two, Lord's Supper. Three, washing of feet. Four, anointing service. Five, laying on of hands. Six, assembling of ourselves together. And seven, greeting and embracing each other with a holy kiss. Body of those? Wonderful. If you don't, you can always replay it on YouTube and enjoy those teachings. Let's go to tonight as we continue on the indwelling of yes sister Eve question marriage is not one yes marriage is one because sister Brown gave it I I didn't spend time on it. Okay. Yes marriage is one and we know the scriptures that is listed in, in, in Timothy in first and second Corinthians 
all the scriptures that support wives and husbands. Anybody can tell me the main scripture that says that the bed is undefiled? Yes? The bed become undefiled? Alright, so your assignment for next week. Write it down. My assignment for next week is to give me the book, the scripture, the book, the scripture, which is the chapter and the verse that speaks to marriage making the bed undefiled. Because that's the purpose of marriage. To ensure that we move from fornication and sin and letting the bed become a holy and a reverent place. Assignment for next week. The ordinances of the church marriage. What are the scriptures that support marriage? And you'll find a lot. A lot of scriptures. Scriptures that tell you what husband is to do. Scriptures that tells you what wives are to do. Scriptures that tell you what older women are to do. What younger women are to do. All these scriptures support marriage as an ordinance of the church. And the Apostle Paul crowned it by saying, If you cannot hold your peace, it is better to marry than to find that scripture as well. So we can talk about it. Because we, we, we said them all the time, you know. Yeah. We said, but I don't want anybody to say, Pastor Allen said this. I want you to find it in the Word of God. Look at it for yourself. Read it for yourself. And say, wow. I didn't know this is what the Bible was saying, you know. But it is there. Alright? Let's get to tonight's teaching. We said this week we are still looking at the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us. Now, when I look at what we have been doing since last week, putting it in a category, we identify that one of the benefits of the Holy Spirit was that it was a teacher. Am I correct? And we identify the scriptures that states that the Holy Spirit is a teacher. So let's get into the Word of God tonight. And I want to introduce it tonight by saying that the benefits of the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us can be compared to a number of things. And the best one I found was water. The body is made up of how much percent water? Over? Some say 75, some say 80. I say over 70% of our body is water. And therefore, our body does not want water. Our body needs water. If there is no water after three days, what happened to us? You are dead. There is no question about it. You are dead. So somebody said, Oh, what I'm fasting. What? We fast for three days. I mean, I eat no food. I mean, I drink no water. And I said to you, not so. You know what I know? Because I've done it so many times. You brush your teeth. You swallow. You bathe. You swallow. You will understand when you are doing a three day fast and you say, I'm not eating anything, I'm not drunk anything how much you have consumed just by brushing your teeth, having a shower, preparing yourself while you are fasting. Check it out. But we are saying that going three days without water depletes the body of its electrolytes and causes you to perish. What are the benefits of water? It has neurological benefits. It increases the memory. Increases the resilience, increases the mental stamina. So if you are doing some work over a period of time, you're teaching or you're studying, it's good to have a bottle of water. You keep consuming it, keeps you hydrated. It also benefits you in terms of weight management. So if you don't want to eat a lot of food, drink a lot of water before your meal, drink a lot of water after your meal. And you realize that it manages your weight. What else does it do? In terms of, it helps with the gastrointestinal system. Hydration helps with 
Defecation. Oh, oh, but no, I can't put that. Yes, it does. Hydration, drinking of water, helps with defecation. If you're having constipation problem, oh, sorry, I'm a nurse, I didn't tell you. If you're having constipation problem, the solution is your water-based food, which is your vegetables and your fruits, and consuming water. Don't drink drinks, because the sugar in it does not help with the gastrointestinal system. But what's the last one I have here? It reduces headaches and the tensions in the muscles. A lot of persons, who, anybody here have stitches? Yeah. Anybody yeah. have muscle cramps? Yeah. yeah. It is lack of water. Lactic acid builds up in the muscles and it causes your muscle to go into spasm and you're trying to come out of your bed and it holds you and you can't move the muscle. It is lack of water. Lack of water, sir? Yes. So, lack of water, lack of exercise, lack, lack, of, lack of being fit, a lot of other things, but we must ensure. So, based on that tonight, that's the foundation of life. That just as how water is beneficial and we do not want water, we need it. Our body depends on it. It is the same way that the believer needs the Holy Ghost to dwell inside of us because we need it. We depend on it. What do we depend on it for? Number one, he's a teacher, which we did already. Number two, he is our divine helper. Need a reader to help me tonight. St. John 16 and verse 7. The Holy Spirit is a divine If the Holy Spirit is a beneficial source of help to us, we need to accommodate St. John 16 verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is an ex experience. Experience for what? For you that I go away. It is an expedient. It is an expedient. It is expedient, which means urgent that I go away. Continue. For if I go not away. For if I go not away. The comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, but if I depart, I will send him. I will send him unto you. I will send him unto you. Jesus speaking here, saying to the disciples, that I have been with you, and 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 and, and I want you to to match what Jesus is saying here with his previous message. Jesus spoke, spoke in the Gospels and he, in his teaching he said to the woman, if a grain of corn fall, fall into the ground and die, it will spring up and bring forth more corn that it's able to share. But if it abides by itself and is not placed into the ground, it cannot share. He was explaining in a parable here about the him being crucified, being buried, being resurrected, going back to his father and coming as a comforter. So that here of God is now able to share from Jerusalem to America, to England, to Jamaica, to Barbados, to send kids. But when he was here on earth, he was what? Just a grain of corn. Where was he? In Jerusalem with his disciples. He wasn't everywhere. But he said, if I go, according to St. John 16 and verse 7, I will send and I will come again as a comforter. And therefore he said, I am coming to be your divine help. Let's look at number three of what the Holy Spirit, the benefit of the Holy Spirit to the believer. It sanctifies the believer. 
The Holy Spirit sanctifies the believer. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 11. We're looking tonight at the benefits of the providing the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us. The benefits of the Holy Ghost living inside of the believer. It sanctifies the believer is number three. 1 Corinthians 6, 11. Who has it? Go ahead. And such were some of you. And such were some of you. And so were some of us. And so was I. What did it say, Sister John? But you, but you are washed. Oh my God. You are washed. But you are sanctified. And you are sanctified. But you are justified in the name. You are justified in the name. Of the Lord Jesus. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are sanctified and you are justified. I was coming down today listening on TBC radio, this lovely song playing. Some of us were liars. Some of us were stealers. Some of us were backbiters. But God. Somebody said, But God. But God. That is where the turning around occurs. The Holy Spirit living inside of us. Oh my God. Has changed. Somebody said from rags to riches. Somebody said from rags to riches. Oh my God. If you understood what the devil plan was for us and how his plan was for us to make us the worst of the worst. But God has sanctified us. I know one thing in you know, that. Because my mouth big enough, you know, the devil wants to kill me. He wants to shut me up. He wants to close me down. But I, I come to realize that I have a God who is a protector and is a defender. First Corinthians 6 11, the Spirit of God sanctifies the believer as it dwells inside of us. Number four. Number five, four we are? Number four. The Spirit of God draw us closer to Christ. Benefit of the Spirit of God dwelling inside the believer. It draws the believer closer to Christ. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. Draw us closer to Christ. Allow us to become Sons of God, join us closer to Christ, allows us now to become examples of the believer. Go ahead, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. But we are, we are, with open face beholding, open face beholding, as in a glass, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, are changed, are changed, into the same image from glory to glory, from glory, to glory. Even, as by the spirit. even as by the spirit of the Lord the spirit of the Lord is changing us from glory to glory and I'm, and I'm giving my Bible students a challenge tonight we are in Acts of the Apostles where they call Christians the first time you're not telling me you have to write it down for your assignment. In Acts of the Apostles, I already give you the book. You just need to find the chapter and the verse. Those who are joining us live on Facebook, write it down for next week. We are in Acts of the Apostles where the church and the workers in the church were called Christians. Why were they called Christians? Because as a glory to glory resonate on them, and showed in their lifestyle. Somebody said, hold on, man. I think these persons were walking with Christ. They look like Christ. They sound like Christ. They are doing the things that Christ did. Oh, my God. After the Pentecost, the Bible said that Peter and John walking up to the synagogue. The man was sitting at the gate beautiful for how many years paralyzed. And Peter said, look on us. Oh my God. 
man look at them, Peter said, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of the Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And immediately the man get up, ran into the temple, begin to worship God. It tells us tonight that when the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us, we manifest Christ. So what we must become? We must become Christ-like. I remember you for Christ, you used to have some armbands that ask the question, what would Jesus do? Somebody hashtag that, no? Yes, you young people like to hashtag what W would W Jesus J do? WWJB hashtag that. What would Jesus do? Because we are operating in a time now where all we are focusing on is maybe what the big stars or the big actors or the multimillionaires or the famous people. What would they do? Yes, Sister Prem? Um, Pastor Sister Gandhi has answered the question. Yes, go ahead. Yes, she said, Axel Sister Gandhi, Axel Level, come a little closer, man. What is the, 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 the chapter? Where is the verse? Talk to me now. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Sister Gianni, for joining us live on this Bible teaching. So we must get to understand that as Christ dwells in us, the Christ-like nature must come out of us and it must be demonstrated. It must, we must not hear it in our voice. I don't know, some of them go some place and people say, say, Pastor, how are you doing? And I'm saying, they say, no man, no worry man, that voice is the voice of a pastor. I say, wow, I didn't know pastors have a specific voice. <laughs> yes? <laughs> okay, somebody found it. Read it, Sister Georgia. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, verses 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. So the location was at Antioch. Yes? And it came to pass. A whole year they spent in Antioch. With the church. And taught much people. Oh God, I love the word of God. Teaching is still going on in 2020. Taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in, Antioch. first in Antioch. Oh, I feel something nice in this place. It is the presence of the Lord. Teaching is still happening in 2020. In Antioch, somebody saw them and said, My God, these men came from Jerusalem with a word. But I heard that there was a crucified lamb in Jerusalem and his name was Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And here are these men. I believe they are Christians because Christ is coming out of them. Thank you so much for that, my Bible students. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, verses 26. Continue with the benefits of the Holy Ghost inside of us. The Holy Ghost serves as a source of our spiritual gifts. And I will add the word calling to that. The Spirit of God dwelling inside of us is the source of our spiritual gifts and calling. Scripture, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 to 11. Somebody find it and read it for me. It is the source of our gifts and our calling in the ministry. The Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us as it teaches us, as it helps us, as it sanctifies us, as it draws closer to Christ, as it helps us to do the will of God. I skip that one. I skip that one. So I need to do that. So let's do this. The gift and calling. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. Now there are diverse gifts. Now there are diverse gifts. Say that again. Diversities. There are diversities of gifts. There are 
several gifts that are given. Continue. But the same spirit. But the same spirit. But one spirit. Continue. And there are differences of administration. And there are differences in administration. The word administration here means what? Presentation. There are different coming out. Continue. But the same Lord. But the same Lord. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Continue. And there are diversities of operations. And there are diversities of operations. Several ways in which the Spirit of God moves. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. But it is the same God worketh all in all. Hold it right there, Sister White. Let's catch up in God. The Spirit of God in the church must work through the praise and worship team, must work through the devotional leader, must work through the watchdog, as the Apostle V.T. Williams would say. You need to have those pit bull prayer mothers chopping at the bit and possessing the power of the Holy Ghost to cast out demons and, and to have the power. The preacher who comes up must manifest the same power that just finished in praise and worship, just finished in the devotional leader, manifesting in the prayer mother. It's the same spirit that needs to come from the, the preacher, the speaker, to deliver people, to heal people. It is diverse manifestations, but it is the same spirit. Continue, Sister White. But the manifestation of the spirit. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man. Is given to every man. To profit with all. To profit for all. What? What is it saying? Everybody must benefit when the spirit of God finish moving. Somebody need to write that. Every individual. In the presence of the moving of the Spirit of God, must benefit must benefit from the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. must benefit from the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. Somebody who has written down that statement, read it aloud for me. Every individual in the presence of the moving of God yes, must benefit from the power and presence of the Holy Ghost. Someone is asking you to elaborate on it. Elaborate on it. Yes. So, all scriptures are given by inspiration and is profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction into righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. When the Holy Spirit is in operation in the church, in operation in your home, in operation in your community. Every individual in that space must benefit. Now, let me tell you, benefit can be positive to you and it can be negative. But the outcome will be beneficial to all, which is one. If I have sin dwelling inside of me and I come up here and I take the mic, and the Holy Spirit move and prevent me from operating in the flesh. That is benefiting to the church. You know? But to me, how would I feel? I would feel insulted. I would feel bad. But that is where self must be crucified and understand that one. God is using the Holy Ghost in the believer to express to you that we are sin abound, God will not abound. And I always use the story 
of Ananias and Sapphira. They had a piece of land. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. They had a piece of land. Nobody asked them for it. They decided that they are going to sell it and give it to the church. The money to the church. Be careful what you promise God. Not pastor. Not nobody. Be careful what you promise God. They promised the church. Through themselves. They never discussed with anybody. So they talked to God. They made an agreement. They went and sell the land. They sell the land for a million dollars. Oh oh. Church. One million. Mm -hmm. no. Too much money. Mm -hmm. So. The two persons, husband and wife, said, let us give the church 200,000. Because a million too much. Church wants so much money. Acts of the Apostle chapter 5, go read it. And after they sold the land, they came to the church and planted up from yard. Said, are we going to tell Pastor Ali that it's only 200,000 we sell the land for? So the husband Dress up in a three-piece suit, jacket, tail, long coming as well. Boot, tall and shine, walk in. Pastor Alec, I have $200,000 to give to the church. I just sold a piece of land. Was it $200 you sell it for? Yes, Pastor. When the land was yours, didn't it remain yours? When you decide to give it to the Lord, why did you decide that after you changed your mind that the million dollars was too much? You went to give the church 200 dollars Why are you coming to life with the Holy Ghost? Boom! The husband dropped dead, right in the church. They took him up, they bring him over to the they bury him. On their way back, the wife never knew that the church around her. So she walked in, script scripts in her heels. Oh, Pastor Allen, I'm telling you, the Lord has been good to us. We saw the piece of land and we sell it for 200000 and we bring it to the church. Oh, and my husband said we give him everything to the church. Why did you lie to the Holy Spirit? You know you didn't sell it for 200,000. It was a million. When you had it, it remained yours. Boom. The wife dropped dead right in the church. The same persons who brought the husband to Dovka come back and pick up the wife, bring her over there. Why? Because the Holy Spirit manifesting itself in the church, proving to them that this is serious thing. And I'm saying to us tonight that we must understand that when the Holy Spirit is moving in the church, guilty consciences must come clean. Dirty souls must find the altar and get washed. Yes, people who are not in line must come in line. That is the benefit. When the Holy Spirit is moving, the church must benefit. Sister White, you have finished reading? Number eight. Yes. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. One is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge. To another the word of knowledge. By the same spirit. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Three different things. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is three different things. But you need the three of them to function. Okay? Continue. To another faith by the same spirit. To another faith by, by the same spirit. To another the gifts of healing. To another the gift of healing. By by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. Diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. To another, the into one person is in the church speaking in tongues, but the same spirit have an interpreter interpreting the tongues. The same spirit. Yes? Continue. Eleven. But all these worketh that one. Eleven and last. But the one spirit worketh together. And the self same spirit. And the self same spirit. Dividing to every man. Dividing to every man. Severally as he will. Severally as he will. Severally here means that you can get tongues, 
You can get wisdom, you can get knowledge, you can get understanding, you can get the gifts of prophecy, but it will. It's a Holy Ghost that divides it and gives you it as necessary. The one we're doing is 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. The Holy Ghost living inside of us is the source of our spiritual gifts. So those persons with those lovely, harmonious, sopranos, antennas, and altos, those persons can carry those high notes like Sister Joy and Sister Prim. I can't go up there. But it is the Holy Spirit accompanying. Bridget, let me tell you something. If, 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 if you don't get anything tonight, understand this. That no matter how Whitney Houston can sing, you know she did. If you have the Holy Ghost inside of you, what you can accomplish by singing your <coughs> rough baritone voice that sounds like frog in a barrel. But understand this man. When the Holy Ghost is inside of you, I just feel a power. And it brings up that anointing. And you put those words together and you sing them. The person who is hearing, and that's why some persons say, don't listen to the voice, listen to the sound. I don't want you to listen to the voice and the sound, but when the Holy Ghost is directing that sound, into your soul. Oh my God. The voice goes out the window. The words goes out the window. It's like a dunamis power. It hits you. Push you back in your seat, man. Because it is a power of the Holy Ghost manifesting through this individual. The Holy Ghost helps us to do the will of God. Acts 8 verse 29. Somebody tell me which number am I? Number 6. Number six, the Holy Ghost helps us to do the will of God. It is a propelling force. It is a compelling force. It is a moving force. Acts 8, 29 speaks of the Holy Ghost moving this man. Oh God, somebody find it and read it from me. When I read it, I said, whoa. I want the Lord. Would make a move like that. Any, anybody, anybody want to go to Europe but you don't want to take the COVID vaccine to one the plane? You know that the Holy Ghost can take you from here to there? Oh, you don't believe the man. Read the word. Somebody read the word. The Acts 8 29. Then the Spirit said unto Philip. Then the Spirit said unto Philip. Go near. Go near. And join thyself to this chariot. And join thyself to this chariot. Go down to the end of that, 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 that text on it. And where, where it said, and Philip. What happened to Philip when he finished with the eunuch? Know? No man. At the end of the at the end of the chapter. Things are verse 30. 40. Read it, sister George. But Philip was found at Azotus. And passing through, he preached in all the cities. And coming to Caesarea. Philip baptizing you know, in Acts 8 29. And after he finished the baptism, the eunuch went back in his chariot. And Philip found himself in Azotus. He never take a chariot, he never take a plane, he never walk, he never run. The Holy Spirit. Oh, somebody need to understand tonight that when God dwells inside of you. Anybody know the scripture that says, I can do all things? Oh, come on, man. You, 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 you read it, but you don't believe it. You read it, but you don't believe it. You read it, but you don't believe it. I'm telling somebody tonight on Facebook, on YouTube, you read that scripture that I can do all things. 
but you don't believe it. Let me tell you why you don't believe it. Because the job is available to you, but you never apply. School is accessible to you, but you never go. Oh, Lord God, let me this house so down. Everything is in your resource, but you say, I don't have the money, I don't have the time, I don't have this, I don't. I can do all things. I know she won't be upset with me tonight if I testify for her in her absence. But I bless Sister Cambridge for her testimony of confidence. To say, Pastor, I am not a good math student. But when I did the test, I sell myself. Even if I get one, I will be successful. Even if I get two, I will be successful. And Sister Cambridge said, when I finish the test, Pastor, I know that I don't pass it. And the man said, I cannot do the program if I don't pass the max test. But when I finish the test, the gentleman called me and said, report to school. Oh, you don't understand. You don't understand. She believed God that if she wrote the wrong answer, God would have corrected it. Oh, somebody, you've got to have the confidence. You've got to have. You, you must put the word of God to the, I can do all things. Not something. Now, is, is there somebody sitting here tonight who is asking themselves the question, Pastor, what is it that I can do? I'm telling you, you can do all things. Because I've been looking at myself and, and I'm saying, what, Alan, there's a lot more you can do. Yeah, yeah man, there's a lot more you can do. And sometimes, what you do, we park yourself. Sister White, we park yourself. And we say, no, not, not. Not me. I, I, I cannot go there. I cannot excel. <laughs> Sister Alan was laughing at me the other day when I, when, when I read the email to her. She said, Why, well, Alan, you're not easy. Here. So, the next one you're going to say is, Alan, what you said about the PhD? <laughs> <laughs> and I laugh because I'm saying to myself, But it is not me, it is God. And if you talk about it, I can be honest. In 2016, I went to Antigua at our Caribbean Nurses Organization Conference. And Walden University gave me a doctoral scholarship. It is there at Walden University. Put down. We just need to go fill out the application form. I'm not telling you something that's a myth. I'm telling you reality that it is there. I just need to get to it. But at the end of the day, I. I might be here saying to you, you can do all things. I need to tell myself too that I mean, you can do all things. If there's a doctor or scholarship put on for you, you can do it. Because it's not you as well. Oh, hallelujah. It is a Christ that is dwelling in. I want to say to somebody, get up from where you are. In COVID-19, the Lord has been putting in your spirit your ability to do this thing. Get up and do it. I can do all things. It helps us to do the will of God. Continue. Number seven we are at now. It imparts God's love in our hearts, in our lives. Romans 5, 3 to 5. Romans 5, verse 3 to 5. The Holy Ghost imparting the love, God's love for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The benefit. Somebody read from me. Romans 5, 3 to 5. And not only so. And not only so. But we glory in tribulation. But we, oh Lord Jesus. Also. We glory in tribulation. Also. also. Knowing that tribulation. Knowing that tribulation. Oh, slow it down. Tribulation. Work it. Patient. Okay? Continue. And patience. And patience. Experience. Work it. Experience. And experience. And experience. Hope. Work out hope. Now, let's break it. Let's break this down with COVID-19. Tribulation of COVID-19. Bring about one. Patience. If I standing here and the next person is six feet.
from me. I must have patience to wait in my life. No? Because first time, when you're in the line, if you go so, you step on somebody's foot. And if you go so, you step on the person. Not you. No, that's where I come from. Yes? When you're in the bus, Sister White. Sister White, I'm with it. Yes. But when you're in the, those JUTC bus, from half a tree to Papi, I don't know if any one of you have been in it. Yes. Or from half a tree to Dumbtown. Yes. And a Friday evening, when the school has them coming with them school bag, mm -hmm. and it tights so, up, and it tights so, up, and it tights so, up, and you have nowhere to see here, so the bus moving us. <laughs> eh? That's where we're coming from, you know? Yeah. And now COVID-19, so what? The taxi man for carrying one less passenger, no standing in the JUTC bus. So when the bus fly past you, you don't must have patience. <laughs> eh? You don't must stand up there and say, why well, you cut that one and pull it up? We can't go in that way. Eh? Who, who we talk in reality? So it, it tribulation brought about patience. And patience brought about experience. So no. We are saying to ourselves, my God, what an experience over the past 10 months that COVID has brought us through. Social distancing, no more touching. My God, not about the sanitizing and the hand washing. Huh? As you go out and you come in, you wash your hand, did you sanitize, you take off your shoes out. Anybody have been doing this thing? I'm going to stop now. Everybody stop now. <laughs> so you're not, you're not taking out your shoes outside anymore. You're not taking out your clothes on the veranda. Yes, everybody. <laughs> Let me tell you, don't know you now. That's a miracle I tell you. Practice it. Practice your sanitization. Practice your hand washing. Still leave your shoes outside on the veranda. Yes? Right? Well, leave your shoes somewhere where you don't walk through the house then with your shoes that you wear on the road. But we must try and see what, what we are saying. That the one thing that has come out of this experience, I'm, I'm hearing the world is talking about it. That's hope. What, what, what is it that the world is hoping for? Ah, oh, gee, man. A lot of persons woke up this morning and their hopes got busted because persons became allergic to the vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. And that is the hope, you know. Yeah. Somebody went to bed last night with the hope that I hope my name is on the list of the person who will be called to get the vaccine. Mm -hmm. I hope I am next in line to be vaccinated. But when they woke up this morning, they heard those who got it the day before is now in hospital with allergic reaction to what? Their hope, their solution. Yes, but I want to say to somebody this evening, don't hope in Pfizer and all the companies that are rushing to get you a vaccine of hope. But hope thou in God. Oh, glory to Jesus. Hope thou in God. Yes? Because if your hope is in God, then he will come true for you. Question on Facebook, is a prayer. It stopped. It stopped? Stop streaming? Let me check. Give me a second, those who are joining us. Oh, no, no, we're still running, man. We're still streaming. Persons are here as well. Still streaming. Thank you for staying with us. So, we must understand that as the love of God is imparted in our lives, it gives us hope. And the Apostle Paul said, if this life we had hope only, we would be men most miserable. But I'm so glad that there is a city that had a foundation whose builder and maker is God. And John on the island of Patmos saw it coming down as a bride ordained for her husband. Oh, hallelujah to God. My hope is in God. And therefore, 
Romans 15 and verse 13. I'm not going to introduce it yet. Somebody read it for me. Romans 15 and verse 13. This is number 8. This is the 8th point. I'm going to read the scripture first before I introduce it. Romans 15 and verse 13. Yes. Now the God of hope. Now the God of hope. All joy. Fill us with. All joy and peace. All joy and peace. In believing. In believing. That we may abound in hope. That we may abound in hope. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. Our source, right this. The, the eighth point. Our source of hope is in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, the benefit of the Holy Ghost inside of us, it is our source of hope. Yes, sister, yes, yes, sister, John? I was saying, you never finished. Oh, continue. No, no, read it, read it. Add in, add in to 15, 13, 5 verse. Yes, and uh, hope make it not shamed. And hope make us not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed. Because the love of God is shed abroad. In, in, our heart, in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Ghost which, is given which is given unto us our hope the source of our hope is in God and it is spread abroad in our light the joy of the Lord the love of the Lord the source of our hope is not in man and I say to somebody tonight the source of this nation, this world rejoicing again. People feeling free to love and to hope is not in man. It is in God. Remember, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding come from God. And I'm saying this tonight, and I hope somebody in one of those companies who are developing this vaccine will get down on their knees and approach God for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Because if our hope is in you, we are going to fail. Yeah. I said, if our hope is in the physicist and the chemist and the mathematician, we are going to fail. But my hope remains resolute in God. And I'm so happy tonight that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Let's go. To the ninth one, finishing another five minutes. The ninth one. The Holy Spirit guides and directs our prayers. The Holy Spirit, the benefit of the Holy Spirit inside the believer is that it guides and directs our prayers. Romans 8 26. That, that's one of our, that's a part of our theme scripture. That we have been doing. Romans 8 26. Somebody find it and read it for me. And one person find Jude 1 20. Jude 1 20. Romans 8 26. Likewise, the Spirit, Likewise the Spirit also helps help our, our infirmities. For we know not what we shall pray for as we ought to. But the Spirit, it maketh, it maketh intercessions, intercessions for us. us. Groaning, oh God, groaning. groaning. Yes. Which cannot be, Which cannot be uttered. uttered. Oh my God. Yes, so when Penina made all her passes against who? Anna, I love my Bible student. Sharp, benign, and Anna. And when Anna went into the temple, and who was the priest who saw her? But remember what the name of the priest was? Eli, Eli saw her. And said, so, Woman, what make you drink wrong before you come to church? <laughs> you, what, why are you coming to church drunk? But my God, Anna had a problem. But she was not saying a word coming from her mouth. 
But Eli could see her lips moving. And all Anna was saying, Lord, bless his womb. Bless his womb, Lord. Bless his womb. A tired of Kenina prancing at me. Boasting herself with all her children walking behind her, going in. Nice, nice to her husband. Oh Lord, bless me with a child. And the commitment that I say it again. People of God, if you are committed to God, be committed. Not only in word, but in deed. Anna said, if you bless me with a man child, I will present him back unto you. The word of the Lord said, when she had weaned her son, what was his name? Samuel. Samuel. The first prophet and priest. He carried both responsibilities. He was a prophet and he was a priest. Samuel came. Yes, Sister Prem? <laughs> Thank you, Sister Prem. Samuel was given back to the Lord after his mother weaned him. And as he sat in the temple, listening to Eli, Reading the word of God, he heard the voice of God. So he Samuel ran to Eli and said, Sir, you called me. Second time, third time. Eli said, When you hear that voice again, say, Here I am now. I wish somebody tonight would honor God, not only in word, but in deed, to make your commitment a pledge unto God. As Anna did. The Holy Spirit guides and directs our prayers. Jude 1 20. But ye beloved. But ye beloved. Building up yourselves. Building up yourselves. On your most holy faith. On your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus. Do you know that it is an awesome thing to pray in the Holy Ghost? It is a powerful thing to pray in the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, Jesus understood the principle when he spoke to us and he said, don't be like who? The scribes and the Pharisees who go stand in the street and wait until a crowd start pass. They start to talk in these huge exorbitant words. Oh God of excellence and of greatness, you are Shekinah. And they're using our words. But there is something missing. When Jesus stood up and spoke, the rich young ruler came to him and said, Thou art a teacher sent from God. No man can say these things that you can say. People must not only see you and hear you, but they must feel. Oh God. When you kneel down to pray for your children, there must be a shaking. In their system to say, yes, man. Not only hear you and see you, but there must be a feel, there must be a deep felt want that God is at work tonight. I will close with this tonight. That the, the Holy Spirit inside the believer guides and directs our prayers. Sister Bill, just look at the offer receptacle at the front. You see the basket. I took it up and left it in the same place. We're going to collect tonight's offering. Please remember you can make a deposit to the Old Arab Evangelistic Center, check in account at Scotiabank. You can also make payments or PayPal account. All this information is on our Facebook page. You're joining us live if you have your offering with you tonight. 
as you gave unto the Lord tonight. Go ahead, can you stand and just, or if you want to sit and just put your offering in the basket as sister Bev collects tonight's offering for us. I quickly recap for those who are joining us live on Facebook. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. It's our divine help. It sanctifies the believer. It draws the believer closer to Christ. It helps us to do the will of God. It is the source of our spiritual gifts. It imparts God's love on us, in us, and through us. It is the source of our hope. It guides and directs our prayers as we pray through the power of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, I want to say to somebody that you must be filled with the Spirit of God. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of Stand with me. So Be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, strength, 
and my Redeemer. Lord bless you. Thank you for coming. I want to just wish everybody a blessing. Join us live this Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Old Harbor Evangelistic Center. The Lord richly bless you in Jesus' name. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make.